Right, Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and I am joined by Riley Chase of Hostify. And when did we do that first video? Uh, I think it was July 2019 was the first time I was on Tom's channel. It's a millionaire now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we we maybe not quite a millionaire. That there's that misconception of you're making a million dollars in recurring revenue now. That's true. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about the SaaS journey, how he's just an overnight success and you can do it too. You can be a unicorn and just, you just have to scratch some itch and find a need and we can oversell entrepreneurship or something, right? <laughs> uh, you actually are very realistic. Like I am about this as a topic. I, I never say it in a way of gatekeeping. I sometimes think entrepreneurship can be oversold, but but I only say oversold, not that it shouldn't be sold, not that it shouldn't do it. Uh, I don't think it's like that we should, as entrepreneurs who've been successful, roll that ladder of success up and not help people. But I always want to talk about it's real. You have to be very realistic. Uh, it was not an overnight success. You've put in, could you even count the hours? You didn't work a 40 hour week to build this, uh, you, to build the Hostify company, right? It's just... Yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely been a lot of hours. <laughs> It's it's a it's an idea, an alignment, and uh, having this whole. It's, I don't know. It's so hard to describe. You know, isn't it? Because you, you you're in shock when you hit the hit that mark, right? It's yeah. Like, well, the thing is, I never really imagined that it could ever be that big. Actually, when I started it, I was actually thinking this was just like a yeah. I'm gonna this is gonna be a test run to try starting a SaaS business, and maybe if I get ten customers, I remember actually thinking this: if I get ten customers, it'll pay for itself, and that'll be a success for this project, and I can move on to something more interesting or more complicated. But uh, as I got deeper and deeper into it, it got more complicated, more interesting, and I found more customers than I ever thought. So yeah. yeah. So uh, a few years ago, to give you a little background, uh, well, go. We can go further back. When did you start Hostify exactly? Um, May 2018 is when I launched it, and I started like trying to put it together in like February, March 2018. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that made me interested in the whole project well not just the fact that i use unify but because he publicly blogged step by step and by the way hostify wasn't the only thing you started you actually tried uh an msp you tried uh, what else did you have going you had a couple other things I, i'm trying to remember what they all were yeah for so for like four years before starting hostify i had an msp business called lachlan networks after i started hostify i thought well, this is cool um it's growing really slowly but it's it seems like uh like it's working out but i I thought, well, I'll try making a couple other things just like this. I think it got to like a thousand a month. And I was like, well, maybe if I can just like do 10 more things to get to a thousand a month each, then maybe that'll work. So I, I started like a VPN service called Ghostify. That's the other one. And yeah. I started a um, another service uh, called Captify, which was like the wireless portals integration for Unify servers. Um, but I've since shut all those down. I also started MSP community and I don't have time for that. So I shut that down as well. <laughs> but... I, I think it's important to highlight that there it you're... Even though you are someone who's diligent, willing to put the work in, not every idea flies. Yeah. That's just something I like to be as realistic as possible. I sometimes see the oversold of, hey, look, he's making a million. You can do it too. Buy my book and I'll tell you how. Like that's the playbook, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, step here, by step. And there's not really a, uh, the career paths are going to be very different. Uh, the, the commonalities is what you want to look for is like, yes. yes, we all worked hard. We all put a lot of things in there. We also failed at a lot of things. Uh, I don't own suburban computers anymore. I don't have my electronics repair company anymore. <laughs> I don't, I don't have, and I, I don't, I, there's several things Thomas failed at as well. So I always like to be very honest about it, but back to the Hostify. So if you're not familiar with the whole Unify platform, for those of you maybe just came here talking about starting a SaaS business or, you know, follow whatever links led you here. The one thing about it is uh, you got to find something where there's a hole in the market. Yeah, that sounds really obvious. Now, Unify has the controller software that they give away for free. You can just download it. And me, I'm bad at SaaS because I said, why wouldn't I just host it myself? So I host it myself. And why wouldn't other people host it yourself? Uh, that's where I'm not thinking like Riley, who says, this seems like a little bit to set up to host. And I'm like, you know, my mentality, yeah, sure it is. Here's my YouTube tutorial on how to build your Unify hosting. And Riley says, no, I think people want to pay for this as a service. And so this free controller from Unify that manages the Unify platform, Riley built the platform that manages that, that actually takes and takes care of all the hosting for you, takes care of all these uh, little intricacies of what it's like to set it up. And that actually brought you all the way into, you do some QA testing. I, I laugh because I think as big as Unify is, I mean, here's a company <laughs> that's got a market cap of somewhere north of $10 billion. Right. And people ask, uh, I get tagged in Twitter and Riley, and there's a couple other people, like I think Chris from Crosstalk's been tagged too a couple of times. Uh, they'll ask us, should I upgrade to the new version? <laughs> yeah. And we're like, it's always the question. It's always the question, but it's the doing things at scale, uh, 
Riley's really kind of niched into that and become kind of like the voice of Unify that Unify doesn't have. If you're not familiar yeah, also yeah. with the other side of Unify is their support's not great. They give away a product. They don't give away support. They don't even have a paid option for support. And it's weird that didn't Unify have a market doing this for a little while? So for when I started Hostify, we were actually directly competing with Ubiquity. They had, uh, after I launched Hostify, they had actually just launched um, their own hosting product and their own support product. So they had uh, Unify Elite and uh, cloud hosting that went along with that as well. And so, yeah, we were actually competing head to head, but um, we kind of beat them at it because they stopped offering it and now they don't do Elite support. You can't buy it anymore and they don't do cloud hosting. Um, they still have customers um, that we've been migrating over to Hostify. They haven't done updates on their controllers in years. So they actually have uh, controllers out there that are vulnerable with security vulnerabilities running two-year-old 5.11.50, I think it was, or something. That's crazy. And uh, yeah, so we've pretty much taken all their customers, though. They no longer offer it. And um, yeah, it's just really weird. <laughs> it's really weird to have a company have that gap like that. And so one cool thing though is near and dear to my heart is you're extremely public about all this. So the blog posts, you've really done a great job of doing regular updates to step all along the way of how you got to where you are to be very transparent about it. That's uh, Transparency is huge because I like to get share with the audience so to speak how we got where we are no hiding it you know no back end i didn't tell you by the way uh my cousin's the guy who owns unify and that's how i started and right. rob's not your cousin so no no <laughs> <laughs> i don't even think matter of fact at some point i don't think they liked your logo am i right about that that's right yeah, yeah. that's a whole other story <laughs> but <laughs> that's, that was a little bump in the road and yeah. uh things like that they they uh they care about their intellectual property to an extent. Uh, so that's, uh, those, those are some of the challenges, but what's the, so when we talked in 2018 and we did the video, uh, you had actually had a free tier that you offered. And this is common for your building a SaaS model, offer a free tier, get customers charged for it. Was that really your plan or was it just a kind of, so, um, yeah, the free tier, yeah, it has a lot of pros and cons, but it did, it did really raise awareness for, our product um and so yeah we had a lot of free plan users and yeah obviously the idea was hoping that they would convert into paid plan users but that that didn't really work out the way we thought it would we got a lot of home users who never converted and so ultimately it was too much for us to manage on a support level and um yeah so we ended up stop offering the free plan but at the time it was still a good idea and i don't regret doing it yeah I, and i want to bring it up that way because a lot of people i know were so I got some hate, all right, because I'd recommended you and said the free tier. The uh, There's some angry people commenting on that video probably still today. Tom, you said they had a free tier and they don't offer a bait and switch and things like <laughs> uh -oh. that. But it's there's here's the thing. It's not like you had some intention to mislead people. It's the, we don't know when we're building some of these products. We don't always understand. It's hard to say until you do it and you're like, oh, cool. I think these people will convert. And then when they don't, you're like, I have a business problem. At mm -hmm. some point, if the free tier, and, you are not the first SaaS company to run into this. If the free tier gets too big and you can't sustain the yeah. cost of the servers on the back end, then you would end up actually toppling over as a company. You're like, oh, okay, cool. I have a million users now that don't pay. Uh, I'm paying more to Vulture than I have coming in for the paid users. My service is non-viable now. <laughs> yeah, so to be like perfectly honest, it was actually right after Tom made the first video about us in July, 2019, I was the only person at the company. And you know now we're like a team of eight people, but. Um, it was just me doing support, marketing, development, everything. And all of a sudden he made a video. They got 11,000 views. That's the biggest thing that ever happened to the company at that point. We had uh, like 2,000 people sign up yeah. within like two days and uh, they all needed help. You know, how do I adopt? How do I do this? And so it became actually a liability because um, if I didn't help all these people, which I did for like literally days, like all day and all night, I was worried that it was going to give us a bad reputation if we weren't helping the free users, they start leaving us bad reviews. And it's like they weren't even paying customers to begin with and they never would have been. So it, it became a real problem. But um, it's something we might revisit in the future. But um, as long as we can keep growing without free users, it's uh, it's probably not something I'll <laughs> be yeah. doing again soon. But it's <laughs> but it was great at the time. Yeah, and it's this is one of the things I just want to bring some of the honesty to this. These are decisions. It's not like we don't want to. I mean, I, if I can give more things away for free, I would, but I have a sustainability on there. It's like the reason we charge for the support that my company does is, you know, that's our business model. And I've had people still angry at me. Oh, you don't have the time to tell me like a whole recommendation of products. I'm like, not really. I did a video about it. I don't have one-on-one -on -one time. It's not as, I, I have to think about this as a business owner scalability yeah. and you do as well. I mean, we, we want to share as much as we can. Yeah, we and don't. We enjoy sharing we don't expect we don't have 
just like you, I mean, you don't yeah. have an expectation that no. everyone is going to pay you money and neither do I when I'm sharing. It's honestly just to help people. Um, and then, you know, a percentage of them do become customers, but that's not the expectation. Now, what are some of the questions you get? Because one of them I know that it comes to me a lot, but I bet it probably comes even harder to you when you've done some of these other uh, SaaS interviews and things like that about how you built the product is how do you hire people? Because you have a fully remote team. And uh, yeah. having a full remote team, how do you trust them? Like for me, yeah. I did vetting all the people, even when they work remotely, at some point in time, physically worked in my office. It's yeah, a yeah. little different. I have contractors that never worked in the office. That's different. But their contractors are not uh, integrated as they are. Like you guys, they're writing the code for you. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, it's really an interesting topic. Um, and taking it a step further, not only have I never met anyone I work with, but none of them even live in the same country. So I'm in the United States here in Michigan, and I have um, employees in, I have three employees in India, a guy in the UK, a guy in Germany, a guy in Ireland. I've never met anyone before. Um, the guy that's been working with me the longest, Safwan, um, he's been working for me for two years now, and we have never met in person. So it's, <laughs> yeah, people are really surprised by that. Um, but it's just really fun um, because we're able to like, get people that are like really passionate and talented um and instead of just searching for those people locally which i wouldn't be able to find them where i'm no, at they're Michigan. not here <laughs> so <laughs> like to find that these people you know i have the whole world i can look for them and so yeah to answer your question how did we build up the trust um my first hire was safwan and he's in mumbai india he used to work for ubiquity I met him a year before I hired him. He, uh, I had submitted a support ticket to Ubiquity, and he was actually <laughs> riding me back. That's cool. And helping me with it. And I, you know, I thought, yeah, this guy's pretty smart. He knows what he's talking about. And then we actually became friends on Twitter. So this is very early days in Hostify because it was a year before I hired him. And um, yeah, he, he, uh, we just kind of became friends. We talked for a whole year. He, he wanted to start a Wisp in India, and we talked about that. And um, yeah, we just kind of made a natural friendship. And over time, we gained more trust. But even then, it was still like wow, this is crazy. I'm going to hire a guy in India. Like if, if he did something, you know, I'm giving a lot of access to stuff and like, you know, you have to really trust somebody. So it's, 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 a, it's a challenge for sure. I mean, even I, technically, cause you know, the, the, if you're thinking about from things from a security standpoint, the insider threat, wouldn't they just try to steal your employees like that? It doesn't happen as often as it, the risk is never zero, but it doesn't happen as often as you think. I've never, um, I can't say never. I've had it, one employee that tried to steal some customers in my history. Um, but for the most part, the people that work here, the uh, all of them, I've had to turn over keys to the kingdom. They have access yeah. to a lot of proprietary information. They have access to customer passwords and things like that. They have to to get their job done, and you kind of have to trust them. They have to touch the code. I mean, could he could he delete everything right now? He has access to a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> but I mean, there are there are um, you, you have know, mitigations in place. place. Yeah, but it, it, he could be very disruptive. You he, you could get. It's you have I didn't to give him go. access all at once either. It actually took me a long time to give up that control. And one of the first things I did was like implementing duo and some other things that made me feel more secure than yeah. now that it wasn't just me working on stuff. I needed to have security, more security in place. And so that's, that's part of it too. Yeah. It's a really tough thing when you're building a business that you have to think a lot about is uh, building a team that you can trust and putting them in places because if you turn over to micromanaging them one they don't like it no yeah. one likes to be micromanaged i don't some business owners really have a thing for doing it i've watched a lot of them and it can hurt your growth quite a bit it can uh hurt morale it also will just make them ineffective they throw their hands up and i'm not doing anything because they micromanage me so you do have to have a little bit of let go if you plan to grow that's just as simple as it is and uh now you've hired how many more people you said eight people seven now? people seven yeah. more people so okay. uh, eight with me yeah wow so that's uh, it, it. It's small incremental steps, but the other side of that, that's what allows you to sit down here hanging out with me because you live about what two hours away. Yeah, yeah. He, drive My down two hours the and company right now. Yeah, yeah. And you also you did a road trip. Yeah, I did. I took a whole entire month off and I didn't really go on the computer at all. I drove from here to California and back with my fiance. And yeah, literally for a month, I took a vacation and I didn't work on the company. Yeah. And that was in May of this year. You just so responded to general things and like yeah. you stayed in communication with the team, but you weren't actively the one doing it. Right. And I've kind of done the same. I, you know, I have a video where I did where I said, do I sell my company or option B, which is kind of link bait for those who didn't watch it. But <laughs> I hired someone essentially that works here full time, title is VP, but technically they run it. I should just call him president of the company and move my name to founder. But there's only a few of us here, so I don't really need to be so technical. I, I want to yeah. make videos and play with technology. So I now have built myself an automation team <laughs> that does that. You build more of a functional automation software to do it, but the concept's the same of where you want to go. Um, 
what are some of the biggest challenges you ran into? And I, 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 we talked off camera about this. I don't know if you want to talk on camera about <laughs> missteps on uh, projects started that didn't go that were sunken costs and yeah, not recovered. I mean, there's been a lot of um, different challenges in scaling the business beyond just myself. So, um, I mean, the first biggest challenge was hiring my support employee, my first support employee, Safan. And, you know, luckily he had a ton of experience with Ubiquity and stuff, but I still had to create a lot of systems and processes for you know, how we do things and billing and all this different stuff. And um, so reading the book, the, the E-Myth Revisited really helped me think about like that's a good how book. I could remove myself. And that's that's really where it started for me was reading that book because I one of the things in the book was the, the org chart. And it was like, write down an org chart and write your name next to every role. And so it really forces you to think about um, instead of you doing everything, it's like, okay, I'm currently doing all these different roles, but there's separate roles. Eventually someone's going to fill these roles. And so, yeah, for me, writing down support, development, sales, marketing, uh, design. And so, like, writing all this stuff down. And now, once I got to a million, I actually, a uh, million dollars in revenue, I could afford to hire a person for every role. And so, that's where we're at now. We have uh, three support people on our team. We have a full-time developer, a designer. Um, next can be a content person. So, it's it's starting to become... It's, you know, it's why it's so a while. it takes a while and it's but it starts with the foundation if you decide that you want to be an entrepreneur and i've said this a few times i don't know if you've heard me say this go i hate my job is not a business plan and <laughs> yeah, the right. business plan isn't like necessarily something you need to pitch to investors it's it's talking about the structure and you creating that structure and then like you said putting something on the box and emith revisited that's a good book uh i'm trying to remember which other ones I, if i have some other ones i'll leave them linked down below that i've read i know i've got a list of them they just, I didn't have them ready, but uh, there's a lot. They all kind of preach in a different way. The same thing, though, is mm. starting to build Systems. structure and systems, processes, processes. And even when you're a single individual starting a business, whether that be an IT company or something in a tech space like I work in, or you want to start a SaaS company like Riley, the writing down a process, especially when you're by yourself, you're like, I know how to do the process. Why should I document it? I still have documents that only I follow because at some point someone I will hand them off to. This is the process for this. And when you start from that mindset, eventually I can have your work instructions from years ago when I started yeah. are still maybe been modified and tuned up to be modern, but I still always started with each of these processes. Then a person could be assigned to that process on that name on the org chart. These are the steps the person has to be able to follow that helps you one hire for that position and eventually see the light in the, the tunnel that one day I won't be the one doing this. Yeah. You know, I won't be crimping cables anymore. I haven't crimped <laughs> cables though in about 15, 18 years at all. I did it when I very first started my company and I realized one, I'm not good at it. Uh, <laughs> two, it's way better done by people who do it all day. So True. now I always have contractors, but it's still a process. Somebody needs to install these cables. I need to get this infrastructure done that's a position that position happened to be in my category filled by contractor external uh same with accountant right now we still use external accounting and uh but it's a process this is what has to be submitted to the accountant but at some point i can draw a circle around that go we want a person internal as i've become big enough uh i've actually thrown it over to brett's side of the house now he'll decide oh, when we're big enough for it but <laughs> when, whenever we have to replace that but it's a still each one's the same concept when you're uh doing this to to build to where you want to be um, let me think what was the, I guess we can't talk as much about, uh, some of the, uh, hardship of hiring some of the places and things like that. Can we No, Probably um, not. I can talk about that stuff. Um, I want to be real that there was some money lost here and there. It wasn't, you just didn't slowly build this and there's no losses. So. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's a tough topic, but, um, well, uh, what, I wanted, <laughs> what can we do to turn this into a learning lesson? Yeah. So uh, someone else who is going to face this exact one, what's a good vetting for hiring someone to be the coder, to do some of this? That's I feel like I'd be more comfortable talking about once we've like actually accomplished what <laughs> okay. we were st set out to do. Like we're still in the struggle phase on that one, but I'll talk about like, uh, just a little, a little bit, bit about you, it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I, I launched uh, a minimal viable product, an MVP for Hostify on WordPress, coded it myself and everything, and I'm not the best developer. And so we've struggled with that as we've scaled. We want to add new features, like be able to reboot your server, like from the Hostify dashboard, or like um, do a lot of stuff that we do manually for our customers, like adding SSL certificates and stuff like that. Um, so back in, I think it was May 2019, so over two years ago, I started rewriting the website onto uh, Laravel where we'd have more control over the framework and we'd be able to add more features and customize it. But I got in over my head because, I'm, like I said, I'm not that great of a developer. And as much as I tried to learn quickly, I was also dealing with 
uh, other sides of the business like marketing and onboarding and support and and so i got in over my head a little bit and i realized i need to hire someone so i did hire um an agency and they worked on uh the project for over a year and um, there was a lot of uh, cost involved with that. Uh, developers are very expensive, particularly when you hire an agency instead of your own team. And so the the hourly range on that was like 150 to 250 an hour, spread over a year part time, and um, it adds up. It was probably yeah. eighty thousand dollars or so um, before um, I realized that I hadn't really been involved in the project as much. So I'm I'm definitely accepting uh, the blame for that as well because I've. <laughs> You know, I had other areas of the business I was managing, but um, I was looking at the end result and it wasn't exactly what I was uh, hoping for. And so I decided, you know, I need to get more serious about this. Hired my own um, developer part time in Germany. Great guy. And um, so he started working for me part time and he looked at the code they wrote and he said, well, we need to throw this out. We need to throw it out entirely. <laughs> and I was like, no, we need to just like, you know, make it better. But he gave me all the reasons why we need to start over and technologies have changed even in a short span. That's the crazy thing is how yeah. fast stuff changes. Even in that short time span, things had changed so much that he was like, we can do this a lot better if we use this framework. And so, yeah, so then <laughs> that was in January this year. And he said, this will take me like three months. This website's super simple. That's what I heard from the last team too. And yeah. what I thought myself when I started working on it. And um, yeah, and so now it's been nine months. We're getting ready to launch the new website, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, but, and, uh, and a right lot now, of cost. It is, it is September of 2021. So depending on when you're watching this, uh, we, well, launch date is still up in the air. It's a future right. tense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you're always watching the video in past tense. That's so you true. may yeah. be watching this uh, a little while. It may be launched already. But these are, once again, back to the transparency. Uh, one, you blog a lot about this. Two, it's not all sunshine and roses. You didn't just overnight. You, you see some of the su success now. And it, I want to make sure people are very clear. It was a rough path. There was uh, money that we will cry over. And sometimes I think back and I replay, you know, you go to sleep and you replay, go, what would I do if that you had that money I spent on that thing that didn't <laughs> go anywhere? Oh yeah. Okay. Now I won't dwell on it, but let's get back to the future uh, to wrap this up. I seen you posted, you're building a new office. Yes. Yeah. So, Let's talk about where you're at now, what you're doing. So I seen I seen an article about, uh, you know, did they call you a micro SaaS? As I think that was what the term was. So that article. I'll leave it linked down below. Oh yeah. I seen that post today. I think you got tagged in Twitter in it. Oh okay. Uh, I don't know. You know, it's one where you're riding an ATV. Oh yeah. yeah Someone that wrote, made a post about me. Yes. Someone <laughs> made a post about you. Uh, and I seen you're building a new garage, new office, and I think that's pretty cool. Still keeping things small, not going down your means. I know that was. I read the article. I thought that was actually probably a good point. You don't let it go to your head because you want to keep focus. And actually, Riley's been here a couple hours. We were supposed to record uh, a while ago. We just got this whole <laughs> tangent conversation about business and things I like that. I could talk all day. <laughs> yeah, we could just talk all day. We said at some point we should probably record some of this. Um, <laughs> but I'll leave a link to that article. But right now you're you're building so you have a dedicated office. Because by the way, you got all the way here and you, other than living uh, at a very low cost in um, northern area of Michigan or mid area of Michigan, uh, where the cost of living is lower, you're not paying those LA type uh, California <laughs> housing. Costs. Right. It's really inexpensive to live here in Michigan. If you didn't know, yeah. uh, Google us, look up some map price. <laughs> like, how, I mean, you, you own like a couple acres, uh, 10 acres, he has yeah. 10 acres. Now you can't go buy 10 acres in California. Yeah, it's cheap too. <laughs> well, you could, but you would, you would not have, you'd have to have a much larger, you can't have a micro SAS business to do it. <laughs> yeah. You have to be like Google or something. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyways, you're building an office now and uh, what's kind of the future plans? Where are we going from here? Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm building an office. Um, that's, that's kind of more for me than the business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's really just like a four car garage. The second floor uh, is going to have two story, four car garage. The second floor is going to have uh, two bedrooms where one of them is going to be my office separated from the house to be nice and quiet. I can, um, do yeah hopefully do some tom stuff i'll get the youtube studio someday that'd be awesome but yeah the uh, <laughs> he was checking out the studio that ended up being a big conversation piece of yeah uh, you know i built a lot of this i'm not someone who's I, I geek out a little bit about film stuff and things like that but honestly i do it to make anything i can do to make content easier uh riley was kind of impressed when i clicked a button uh and automatically turned on all the lights yeah. the camera and it's <laughs> it's awesome I'm sure he's going to take some notes for release here of all the stuff I bought so he can... Uh, exactly. <laughs> make this... Yeah, I'll have a new space for me to work in. And um, I'm really looking forward to it because, um, yeah, it's the, the journey has been kind of crazy. Like I moved in with my fiance's parents for a year before we were able to buy our house. And 
um, now we're finally have enough money that we can build a, my own office and everything. And it's really exciting. Um, and then for the business, um, we have a really great team now and things are moving so fast. It's so crazy how much you can get done as a team and not just by yourself. And so I'm really excited for, um, the next phase of the business. It's actually uh, a lot more fun now than it was a year ago or two years ago when it was just me, especially. Um, and things are just moving really fast. So yeah, we got a new website coming out. We have, um, a lot of good stuff going on so yeah and i seen you know you've been posting things about uh spending more time thinking about the business and this is it takes a while to get there but this is that whole you can kind of start taking these larger views and go all right what i can see all the team members working and because i'm not the one functionally having to answer every support right. call you can kind of then start shaping the vision and keeping everyone together which is awesome though i mean that's the ultimately i I always think about it from a happiness standpoint. That's one of my biggest drivers myself for starting a business wasn't to get rich. Don't, if you want to just make a lot of money, go work in finance. It turns out pays really well. Uh, <laughs> and you can make a lot of money, go work on Wall Street as a lawyer. There's plenty of jobs that pay money, but uh, happiness and freedom is kind of, if those are better goals, uh, cool, we do want to make money. <laughs> and it's still the goal of business, but it's, it is a longer journey, a harder path, and uh, one that is, like you said, you had several things that we talked at the beginning that kind of flopped before we got there. So mm -hmm. that's still going to be the reality of it before you get to build your four car garage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I will leave links below the previous interview and I haven't watched it. I should have rewatched that one because boy, what a difference. Uh, two years makes. Yeah. Two years makes. Yeah. I know. It was, it was almost actually, it's got to be close to three years. Was it 2018 or 2019? 2019, July, okay. 2019. July, I think July it was. 2019. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, it's just, just a little over uh, three years then. But we're, you know, a whole pandemic away. Yeah, it feels like a decade ago. <laughs> feels like a decade ago. Everything feels like it was just forever ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the before times. The before times, yeah. <laughs> but I'll leave links to all this. I'll leave links to those. I'll leave links to that, uh, to his blog, where you can follow the journey, because you Please. still have all that up, right? Uh, the... Yeah, I haven't posted a blog post in a long time. But <laughs> but it still starts with that earliest stuff, and I yeah, think yeah. it's so cool. You break down a lot of your thoughts, a lot of your details on there. You even have the cool little thing. Uh, you got that You got that graph that shows how much revenue you make annually. Uh, yeah. Uh, so at rchase.com yeah, it's yeah. Still, if you click on hardcore year um from 2019 i i set a goal to get to 100,000 a year and every month i post updates about what it was like and and the progress i made and i ended up getting there thanks to tom a little early so i, I think yeah. that video helped well and i and i regret myself like i started my business all the way in 2003 i wish i would have been someone i don't i didn't create content back in 2003 and i didn't journal my life oh. so there is a gap where I can, it's kind of a blur from 2003 till yeah. I started becoming a content creator around 2016 or 17. Um, I don't know. I did a lot of things. I kind of know what I did. Like there's, it's hard in that phase to document it because you're so busy too. I so. worked, yeah, I bounced around from so many different things. I don't really have a journal of my life. I may have a bunch of photos and memories of my life, but not, not like he's got, cause it's going to be something you're going to look back on. Cause you're so young right now. I mean, you're a 28. Yeah. Yeah. You're so young right now. You're like, remember what it was like. <laughs> remember what it's like. Cause I mean, I was, I was like 26 or 20, cause I'm 45 now and I started 18 years ago. So I'm in my twenties when I started the business, but because I didn't document it, I was like, I remember being really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't remember how much we did. I, I, I mean, I can look it up in my tax records, but it's not really the same as like what you did. So I think that's really cool. So check all that out. All the links will be down below. Uh, thank you for joining me on this. We'll, Thanks, uh, maybe we'll make one more video before you leave. I don't know. I'm going to think about it. So cool. Thank you for riding it. the Tesla, right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So we're gonna we're gonna go do some fun stuff. Take All care. Right, cool. All the links will be down below. Thanks. Thanks, guys. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the hire us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.